In the last video we talked about how to find the um, domain when we talked about a rational expression. Now there are two other types of, um, or I say exp expression uh, equation, there are two other types of equations that we need to look out for also when we're talking about domain. And the second type is a radical. Now you're going to know that you're working with a radical equation whenever you see that square root. And we need to think about what kinds of things we can take the square root of and what kinds of things we can't. Remember that whatever is underneath this radical, you can take the square root of a lot of different numbers. They may be perfect, they may not be so perfect, but the only thing that you can't take the square root of is a negative number. So if what's underneath the radical turns out to be like a negative 2, that we cannot do. It's not allowed. So whatever this turns out to be has to be zero or larger. We're going to use that idea when we talk about the domain. So our rule for finding the domain of a radical equation is we're going to set what is under the radical greater than or equal to zero and solve for the domain. which means in this particular problem we're going to take 1 minus x and set it greater than or equal to 0 and solve. So I'm going to move my 1 over which means I'll have negative x is greater than or equal to negative 1 and then we're going to divide by the negative or multiply by negative 1, you can do either way to get x is less than or equal to 1. Now I flipped my inequality over because remember when you're dealing with less than and greater than the only time you have to flip the symbol is if you multiply or divide by a negative. So since I did that this time, I had to change that inequality. Now what we have when we've solved is the domain. So remember we can write domain two different ways. We can write it either in set builder notation, which I'll abbreviate. So in set builder, the domain would be the set of all x's such that x is less than or equal to 1. Remember, it's always the set of all x's such that and then our rule. The other way is interval notation. So I'll just put i in. And in interval notation is where you want to write it as intervals. So the easiest way, just like we did with the um, rational uh, function, is to draw the number line and look to see exactly how these things are, uh, you know, how this is setting up on the number line. So if this is a 1 right here, the x's that are less than or equal to 1, less than would be everything to the left of that 1. And because we have equality, we have to use a bracket on the 1. Just as a quick refresh, remember that bracket means that it's included, parenthesis means that it's not. But once we have this drawn out, it's much easier to see the, the domain, uh, the interval actually here. We're going to start on the left at negative infinity and go all the way up to 1. So this would be negative infinity to 1. Now infinity always gets a parenthesis because we don't know exactly where it is. It's just a kind of a concept out there. But in this case, 1 is going to get a bracket because of the equality. Now our third type of function that we're going to be dealing with, especially here at first, is a polynomial function. And these are the easiest ones. For writing the domain for a polynomial function is always all real numbers or negative infinity to positive infinity if we're writing it in interval notation. So you have to know these three different types of functions and the procedure for finding the domain for each one. So drill yourself over and over again. This is a crucial concept.